Now, Howard University here in Washington, D.C. has a long legacy of bringing awareness to the disease. Dr. James Taylor is one of those in the fight. I'm Dr. James Taylor. I'm the director of the Center for Sickle Cell Disease at Howard University. I've been working with the center for almost 20 years. I think there's a historical perspective that Howard is very intimately related to. So beginning in 1972, because of the National Sickle Cell Control Act, Howard University was lucky enough to be one of the first national centers for sickle cell disease research in the country. And Roland B. Scott was the founding director of the center. He recognized in Washington, D.C., with a large African-American community, we had a lot of sickle cell patients. His first paper in the field was 1948, and he then spent the next 20 years here in Washington going over to Congress and telling people about sickle cell disease and how common it was. And in the early 70s, President Nixon put together a commission of African Americans. In the wake of the 1968 riots and a lot of turmoil in the United States, President Nixon wanted to engender goodwill, and he put together a panel of African-American leaders. Rowan B. Scott was one of those leaders, and their charge was to come up with projects for the federal government that would engender goodwill. And one of those projects was the National Sickle Cell Control Act to mandate that research take place in sickle cell disease focused on patients. So in large part, that it, he is responsible for that legislation. So that was a landmark, and because of the 1972 Sickle Cell Control Act, Howard was one of the first uh, universities to have funded sickle cell research. Sometimes it does take legislation to force people to do the right thing. Most of our research right now is focused on um, understanding the underlying biology of the disease that arose in Africa, and that's where this is a really common disease. In the Republic of Congo, one in four people has sickle cell trait. It's double the prevalence of sickle cell trait in African Americans. There are many children born with sickle cell disease every year, and these are people just like in the United States. They can't work. They're too affected by the disease. The patients number in the thousands, so one of our research projects here at Howard, we have an agreement with uh, the National Center for Sickle Cell Disease in Brazzaville, Congo. It's in Equatorial Africa. Uh, their uh, clinic has been open for six months. They have 8,000 patients, 8,000. It's gratifying to be able to know every day that you make a difference.